Hello and welcome to my twelfth video in using Blender 2.6. Today I'm going to be covering adding textures to an object. The method that we use to do this is called UV mapping. And UV mapping lets us kind of take an object, um, in this case we're going to use a cube, um, but you can also do this with any object, even a really complicated um, character, um, for instance, and take the kind of the surface of the whole mesh and decide where we're, where we're going to kind of make cuts, mark seams, like we're making a pattern for clothing, and then lay all the faces of that mesh down onto a flat, flat square, save that flat square as image, as an image file, and then paint the texture for that object in a program like GIMP or Photoshop, any image editor, uh, and then put that really detailed, nicely done texture from your graphics program back onto the, the 3D model in Blender. Um, so let's get started. I'm going to go into um, edit mode, so I'll press tab, and I'm going to decide which sides are going to be, my, or which edges rather, are going to be my f my seams. So I'm going to select the edges that I want to be the seams of my object, so I'll select these ones. Selecting which edges are going to be your seams is kind of an art, especially if your mesh is very complicated, but this is a cube so it's pretty easy. So I've selected this kind of fun, uh, funky pattern of edges because if I actually take these faces now, if I f kind of folded these faces down, you can see that these two would kind of fold flat to the ground, that one and that one would fold flat to the ground, and then these three, that one, that one, and that one could like fold down and spread out, and we would have kind of like a T shape uh, if we folded all these faces down by cutting the seams as they are. To mark these as seams, we have to select them. Um, and then select in our tool shelf under the UV mapping uh, heading mark seam. So when you have edges selected, you press mark seam. Uh, they become red. Those become where you're going to be cutting the um, the seams of your object. This is kind of like um, peeling an orange, like one of those Christmas oranges that you can peel really nicely and lay out all as one um, solid or one piece. Uh, in other words, onto a flat surface. To do that, to lay out our faces flat onto a, f uh, or to make an image out of all the faces, we have to divide this window into two. Uh, so I'll drag that little shaded area over. I'm going to get rid of my tool shelf by pressing T, and we're going to change this window type from a uh, 3D viewport to a UV image editor. And of course, on our header, there's this button here that lets us change the window type. I'm going to select UV slash image editor. I'm going quickly because this video can only be about 15 minutes long, and I have had to made, make it a few times so that it fits into that length of, or short length of time. Okay, I'm going to switch into face select mode um, so we can lay out the faces. But you'll notice that because this window is narrower, I can't see my face and my edge in my vertices select mode. So I'm going to middle click down, so press my, my mouse wheel down, and then drag this left, and that's how we can kind of scroll or drag um, the header. And I'm going to select faces, and I'm going to press A, select all the faces, and to unwrap, I'm going to press U, or whoops, I pressed Y, it said U, and that brings up the UV mapping uh, uh, menu, and I'm going to select unwrap. And as you can see when I press unwrapped, it kind of took all the faces and cut it based on the seams that I made, and it laid it out flat here. So that's the same pattern that we made by making the seams over here. It's, it's a T-shape. I'm going to press R, and so I can rotate these just like I would rotate an object in a 3D viewport, but I'm going to press negative 9, 0. Actually what I'll do, I'll control Z, R, and then 9, 0 to rotate it 90 degrees. And of course I can press S to scale this down, just as we would with any object. And I'm going to make sure it fits into this square, because this square is going to be the size of the image that we make, or the aspect ratio of the image that we're going to make. So to save this as an image, in other words, the layout that we have right now, I'm going to go to the UV menu in our UV image editor window, and I'm going to select export UV layout. And this is going to let, let us save that square with our mapping uh, as a PNG image file. So I'm going to save that to my desktop. I'm going to save this as cube. Uh, map, and it's going to put PNG at the end of it, and I'll select Export UV Layout. I'm also going to save this image, or this uh, Blender file, so I'll press File, Save, 
and again I'll save it to my desktop. It's important to save your, your Blender file and your image into the same folder. So I'm going to call this cube underscore zero one. And of course it'll add dot blend to the end of it. And now if I minimize that, you'll see that I have a cube underscore zero one dot blend file and the cube map dot png file. And if I open the cube png, you'll actually see if you can see this on YouTube, those lines, those edges of the, those faces will actually be in this PNG file. So we can now know exactly where we're drawing and how it'll look on our cube. I'm going to close it in that program and open it up in an image editor. I'm just going to use Microsoft Paint today because we're just doing this as a demo, but I would normally use Photoshop. Um, and because it's a PNG file, it can have transparency. And in fact, it does have transparency to it. And that's why you see these, this checker pattern here. Checker pattern in, in most graphics programs means transparency, um, but not all graphics programs can see this transparency. It'll just see white. And because Paint is a very basic program, it just sees white. So I'm going to use my Paint Bucket tool. I'm going to fill in each uh, side with a different color. And you'll notice that I get kind of really bad edges with white because it's, uh, we're using Paint. And let's see. I'll make that one pink. I might draw letters on the sides of these, or numbers, so I might draw um, one, two, three, four, five, and six. Now, of course, I would spend a lot of time um, making a good texture if I was doing a character, but of course, this is just, just a demo. So I'll press save, um, and I'll close this, and now our image looks exactly as we drew it. Um, and for some reason, it's not showing the transparency anymore. It's just showing white, but that's okay for now. I think that's because we use paint to, to open it. I'm going to go back into Blender, and now we're going to apply that image um, to the cube. So I'm going to press Tab to go back to, see, to go back to um, object mode. I don't need that window too much anymore uh, until the very last step, so I'll get rid of it. And now in our properties window, I'm going to add a texture, so or a, a material rather. So I'm going to go to materials and press new. And I might make it kind of a red color. I'll name it red, in fact. Now we have to add a material, in other words, just a plain old color or, or gray, um, in order to add a texture. A texture uh, can be added in this um, next tab over in the properties window. But it's important to know that each one of these texture slots belongs to this red texture that we made, or this red material that we made, excuse me. Um, if we had a different object selected, or a different material selected, this list would be different. Okay, If we actually had textures made in these slots, they would be different. So in other words, um, this textures um, tab is kind of like a subset of this materials tab, or whatever material that we have selected. So to add a, a texture, like an image that we're, we'll be adding to this red uh, material, I'm going to go to the uh, textures tab, press new, and by default it makes it a cube kind of a, uh, a texture. We don't want a cloud texture, rather. Um, we don't want that cloud texture, so we're going to select the pull down menu and change it from clouds to image or movie, because we're going to bring in an image or movie file. You can actually have a moving picture on an object as well. Like if you were to make a 3D animation of a TV or a movie screen, you'd want to have a moving uh, image, movie, right on the on, a, on an object like a flat screen. Um, now that we've changed this texture type to image or movie, we're going to go down to the image section and press open and actually open up that cube map PNG that we uh, painted with in Paint. And you'll actually see it up here. Uh, it's tiled because this window is wide. We can show it on an uh, object, show it on a different kind of object. Um, but you'll notice that if I press F12 to render, it actually showed up in my UV window. I'm going to change that. I'm going to make it render to a new window. You don't have to know how to do that, by the way. I'm going to press F12. Uh, it put the image onto the object, but it didn't map it properly. We want all of those sides, obviously, to match up with the sides that we um, flattened out, made a map of, a UV map of. So to do that, I'm going to fix the mapping coordinates type. 
Uh, and to do that, I'm going to go into my uh, properties window with the object selected, select my uh, materials, um, and go to the actually textures tab. And down under the image, where we were brought in the image, there should be a section called mapping. And by default, the way that it maps that image file to the cube is by a generated coordinate set. And that coordinate set just happened to put the image that we brought kind of flat on the top, but not on the sides. That's not what we, what we want. We want to actually use this UV map. We want it to actually put that image in that square, essentially, and have each side be a proper side. So we're going to change generated to UV. And now if I press F12 to render, it actually puts the image on the right sides because we, ch we changed the mapping type or the mapping coordinates to UV, which is the unwrapping work that we did. Uh, that side's black because there's no light. So I might go into my scene. I'm going to go back to object mode. I'm going to duplicate by pressing Shift D my lamp so that we have a basic three point lighting system. I'm going to press 7 and go back and drag that. So now I have got four lights and they're all around my cube. Um, so now if I press F12, I can see all the sides of my cube. If I rotate my cube, I can rotate it on the Z axis only. You can see that all my sides are done. And that's basically how you UV map. Um, there's one more step though. If I want to be able to see the texture in my 3D viewport, we've got to kind of change a few things. Um, in order to see a texture in here, we actually have to bring the image into the UV image window or the UV, uh, whatever it's called, the uh, UV image editor window. Uh, and to do that, because we've already brought the image over here, we've actually brought in the image into Blender over in the textures panel, that image is kind of in our shortcut uh, list of images. So anytime you see this little image icon or picture icon, you can refer to the whatever image we've already brought into Blender. So down here in our um, UV image editor window, I'm going to go to um, this little icon again, and select the cubemap.png, that same image file, that I'm just scrolling up and down to zoom in and out, of course, um, that we brought into the texture. So now that I have that, you'll see that if I go back into, whoops, I'm going to do that again. I'm going to go into edit mode um, on my cube so that we can actually see the layout, and open up that cubemap.png. So now these faces, I'm going to scroll over, and select faces. Now these faces are still uh, here. So now to see these faces onto this on this cube in the 3D viewport, I have to open up my properties panel, which is this panel right here in my 3D viewport, by pressing N. And now if I scroll down to, um, where is it? Display. There it is. And open that up. We're going to change the shading type of this window. Because right now, it's set to multi-texture, which doesn't do a very good job or can't really bring images into this window. It can't display images on the faces of the cube using multi-texture. We're going to change that type from multi-texture to GLSL, and then select Textured Solid. And when we press that, you'll actually see the image on the sides of the cube. And because of the way that we uh, mapped this and laid this out, some of the numbers will be upside down, uh, but that's OK. So I can go back into object mode, and I'm all set to go. There's my cube with different sh um, faces that we drew in a graphics program. I know there's lots of steps, um, but try it out for yourself. If you're modeling a more complicated mesh like a character, you'll want to spend more time deciding where your seams are going to be, because you'll need to actually be able to mark the seams in such a way that you can lay out your um, object flat and not have it very distorted. Um, I'll go over this in more detail in a future video, uh, but thanks a lot for watching now, and I'll see you next time.